Let's operate a little bit, okay? Look, I just account uh, for the, the, the virtual uh, board principle, as I have stated here, and now I do some operations here. So look, I have the, 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 this part here, I have difference, gradient of sigma times differential of u, right? This one turns the appear here. So this term here, I operate, it can be proven that it can be, pr it can be written as the divergence of sigma times delta u minus sigma double dot gradient symmetric of symmetric gradient of delta u. That's a proof that it can be, it's, it's proven in the, in the book, it's just operational, right? So the divergence of sigma times delta u can be written as the divergence of sigma times delta u, the, the global, the two terms divergence, minus sigma times the symmetric gradient of delta u. And now I integrate that term, and of course the integration of this term, this part, allows me to apply the divergence theorem, because I would have, when I integrate on all the volume this term, I will obtain the integration on all the volume of this term, but then that's equivalent to the integration on the boundary of this term replacing eta times n. Okay? So is n sigma delta u, that's what I have here, integrated on all the boundary. But since in part of the boundary gamma u, delta u is equal to zero, that is reduced to gamma sigma, the part of the boundary where delta u is different from zero. And that remains as it is. So finally, look, this operational mathematics, which is equivalent, by the way, it's equivalent to an integration by parts. It's like an integration by parts. So that integration of the terms like this can be replaced by that integration on the boundary gamma sigma minus the, that term here. So I rewrite that, I replace that into that, and I have an alternative expression of the Gateau derivative of the functional, which is, you know, that term here, you know, see, this term here, this term here, you recognize, right? You recognize that this term ap appears here. This is the result of this term here and replacing here, okay? Then there is a term that is n sigma delta u that cancels with this n sigma delta u gamma sigma. So that term that comes out from here cancels with that term, okay? So only t star times delta u appear here, and here appears that term rho b, and just to simplify, this is the second derivative of displacement with respect to t square, which is called it's, it's, uh, the accelerations. So that is the same, that is the same, but after same mathematical operations, right? So th this is the same, the same, this virtual, this variational principle is the same as before, because the only thing I've done is just doing some analytical operations on that. Okay? But this form of the virtual world principle is much more suitable for computational methods. Okay? Why? Look, the point is that if you realize here, here uh, uh, I have the, the divergence of stresses, but the stresses depend on the gradient of the, the strains, right? So there appear second derivative of the strains in the original form. Here, in here, at the end of the day, there appear second derivative of the strains, but for the Navier equations. The Navier equations involve second spatial derivative of the strains. However, in here, stresses appear with no der derivative, okay? So I've redu reduced the order of spatial differentiation in the problem. That is why that's much more convenient for numerical methods. It's just by an integration by part. What I have done is an integration of parts of the, by parts of the problem using the divergence theorem and some analytical results. So finally, I can state this, the solution of this variational problem is the same that the solution of the first variational problem, which is the solution of the boundary value problem that I have, okay? Look, now let's try to give an interpretation of this problem. So, uh, first, that is the problem that rephrased virtual world principle. 
Let's think as engineers in the body, in the solution of the problem. So at time t, I look for a certain solution of the problem, characterized by some displacement u, which I don't know, by the way. At the beginning, I don't know. Okay? That's what I'm looking for. What are the displacements at a given time, at every time t, that fulfill the boundary, the, the boundary value problem? Okay? Imagine for a while that I know that solution. Look, that I impose here some boundary conditions gamma u and some boundary conditions gamma sigma. Okay? Let's consider now that I introduce a perturbation in the solution. What is a perturbation in u? That means that a perturbation with respect to the original solution, so, not the original, with respect to the exact solution of the problem, I consider that solid line solution which is perturbed with respect to the one, to the, to the solution of the problem. Okay? Perturbed by why? Some, this perturbation are displacements which I call virtual displacements. Look, these virtual displacements are compatible in the sense, or are admissible in the sense that I cannot impose any perturbation of the displacements, but only those perturbations that do not, uh, do not, um, do, do not, uh, can, uh, or that, that are compatible with the with the, uh, uh, boundary conditions gamma u. So look that the perturbed solution be at, let's call, a virtual time t plus delta t, that's not a real time. It just means for a configuration t plus delta t, which is obtained for the delta, for the u configuration, the one I am looking for, per tar with these delta u displacements, which are compatible, which are admissible, since they do not modify the, vir the displacement at the points where displacements are prescribed. Look, the, during this process, going from so the, the configuration t at, to the virtual configuration t plus delta t, I have had some displacements everywhere, right? What displacements are? The virtual displacements, delta u. Okay? Well, I can think of some virtual work. We know now we are used to think of the work that the, the, the system, the body, does when he moves a long time, a long time, right? So we could think of a displacement, of work, which is not real but virtual. Why virtual? Because, I mean, these vir displacements are not real, are just perturbations, okay? So that's why I call virtual displacements. And the work that the forces do, do during these virtual displacements are, is called virtual work. Okay? Okay, let's see. What is the work that is done by the body forces? What are the body forces? Well, we can think that this is like a problem in which the body forces are the real body forces minus these which are the inertial forces that come from the accelerations. Okay? So what would be the, wo the work of these B star body forces? It would be sorry, it would be the integral of rho times b star times the displacements, the virtual displacements integrated over b. And then, there are some stresses here, right? What would be the work of the stresses when passing from the configuration t to the configuration delta t? Well, you know, we know that the work of stresses is what we we'll call the stress power. What is the stress power? the product of stresses times the variation of the strains. So in passing from t to delta t plus delta t, what had been the variation of the strains? Well, the symmetric gradient of delta u. So if I wanted to talk about what would be the body, the, the, the work of the, uh, the virtual work, the pseudo work that has been done when passing from t plus t plus delta t configurations, acting the forces b star body forces and t star surface surface and the stresses here would be the following. This part here would be the work made by the external forces. 
the body forces, B minus A, if A is zero, these are the real body forces. If I consider problems with which are not quasi-static, so the acceleration is not negligible, I just consider these pseudo-body forces, which have minus A here. And then, and this is what the external work, so I call that the variation of the external work. Look. And here I have minus. What is this? That is the internal work. The work of the, the stress is time, the variation of the strains. What is strains? The real strains? No. The pseudo strains that are taken as the symmetric gradient of the virtual displacements. Okay? So that can be interpreted, that's an interpretation, as the internal work. Okay? And now, looking at this problem, we can say, wow, this problem says that the external work at the solution, so the solutions that fulfill the boundary value problem, so those solutions that are the solutions I'm looking for, are those who make what? The external work, which is that, virtual work, the external virtual work, minus the internal virtual work, which is that, equals zero, and next, that's the most important part, for every, every, every possible virtual displacement. Not for one, for every. Whenever they belong to be zero, that means they are kinematically admissible. Okay, that's the point. So now, that's why this, that for a mathematician would be a, a variational principle, for an engineer can be interpreted as a work principle, a work that says that the work done under these virtual displacements by the solution configuration, from the solution configuration to that perturbed configuration, the external work minus the internal work is equal to zero. Or in other words, the external work is equal to the internal virtual work. Always virtuals. Always with that. This is not real work. It's just a way of inter interpreting what are, these are Gatot derivatives. It's just a word, a way of uh, interpreting what are the Gatot derivatives of the variational principle. Okay? And look, even if we have no deform, even if that also could, could be applied to the case in which we consider the body uh, non deformable bodies. Okay? And then, in that case, what would be the, the, the boundary, uh, the virtual work principle? That the external work is equal to zero. So the virtual work principle is applied not only in, co in continuum mechanics, it is applied also in rigid solid mechanics. In rigid solid mechanics, this part is zero, and then the virtual work principle translates into that the displacements that make, that fulfill the equations of the problem, make zero the virtual external work for any possible variation, uh, virtual uh, displacements. Okay? If we have the form of our body, then we have to consider here the virtual work minus the, vir the external virtual work minus the internal virtual work. Okay? By the way, just the last step for that is considering that as usually, as I told you, in real engineering, we don't work with the tensor of the stresses nor the tensor of the strains, but the vector of the stresses and the vector of the strains. Remember that? So we consider these vectors of six components for the stresses. And this vector of six components, including the, 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 mm, the gammas, the, 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 the angular strains, okay? And then, as we talk about delta, the virtual uh, strains, we call also the vector of virtual strains. And then we proved that the, uh, in the, under this uh, situation, the double dot of sigma times delta epsilon that appears here, that dot of sigma dot epsilon that appears here, this is the double dot of sigma times delta epsilon, you see, this is the, the 
virtual strains, this product can be expressed then as the product of the stress vector times the virtual strain tensor. Or, if we wish, we can invert that, because now there are products that can be inverted. So the product of the uh, virtual strain vector times the product of the stre real stress tensor. Okay? So finally, the virtual world, the virtual uh, world principle, just changing the sign, we just, in order to make this term positive, multiply by minus uh, one everything, so the zero is not changed. So finally, this is the final form of the virtual world principle as we see it in computational mechanics. The internal virtual world principle expressed as the product of the virtual displacement vector times the real, the corresponding stress vector minus the work, the virtual work of the body forces, including in these body forces, the inertial forces, which corresponds to an integral of on the domain. And minus the value of the virtual work principle so the, this uh, parenthesis should be here. So that is not, that's the virtual, the, the parenthesis should be here. That parenthesis should be here, I will correct it. So minus the, or, or plus in this case, minus the external virtual work, which is done as the work of the body forces and the work on gamma sigma of the attractions is equal to zero, and that's important, for every, every, every virtual displacement, which are kinematically admissible. And this is the form of the virtual world principle. Okay? That is the internal, that is the internal virtual world, and all this in the bracket is the external virtual world. The internal virtual world minus the external virtual world is equal to zero, or in other words, the internal virtual world is equal to the external virtual world. That's the concept. Look, have I done any any restriction so far? Did I talk of elastic? bodies? Did I talk? No, I said, what is the equation? You can be any. Did I say that we were in infinitesimal strains? Did I say it, it, this at uh, any time? No. So, I mean, that is valid for every situation in solids or in fluids, if you wish, in continuum medium. There is no restriction for that. No restriction. It's valid for Static and quasi static and dynamic situations. It's valid for linear and nonlinear constitutive equations. All type constitutive equations. And it's valid also for large and small strains. So, infinitesimal strains, large strains. The virtual world principle has no restriction. No restriction. The only point is that these strains here, the virtual strains, have also always to be computed as the symmetric gradient of the virtual displacements, even if we are in large displacements, right? But as a principle, it has not any limitation. It's completely general. And look, another remark. This is a principle that establishes that some gato derivative is zero. That means some variation, Gato derivative, of certain functional W is zero, has an extreme. But look, it's interesting. We don't know this functional. I mean, we don't know to need what's it B. We, we just need the variation of B, of W, sorry. So in fact, in general, we don't know what is the functional that we are minimizing. But we know that if we express that this functional we don't know in principle has the it has an extremum at the solution of the problem, we look for an extremum at the, at the at the solution of the problem, then the solution of this variational problem is the solution of the continuum mechanics problem. And this is the starting point for for computational mechanics. 